Welcome back to this new video. We would like to add two time domain signals using Vasors uh, because it is an addition, like uh, said in the previous videos. For addition and also for subtraction, we will use a rectangular form of the complex f uh, expression. So what we want is we want the rectangular expression for V1, which is given here in time domain. And we would like to have the rectangular representation of V2, which is given here in time domain. So both of them will be converted to the rectangular form in the complex form. Now, in the, at the end, we would like to have the time domain representation of the total signal V tot is equal to V1 plus the V2. Okay, let's uh, first denote them in the polar notation. Just give the situation a clear picture. So that's actually for the V1 and for the V2, it's like this. This is already discussed in the previous videos. You can look at it in the video description of this video. Now what we want is we would like to go, in this case, to the rectangular form, both for V1 and for V2. Now, now remember, it is very important that you understand how you do that. Uh, I will illustrate it in, in a step-by-step -step form. So what you do is V1 is equal to the amplitude 4. You take it out and you do cosine of the angle, 30 degrees, and plus J sine of the angle, 30 degrees. And you calculate it out. And what is that? Uh, if you calculate it correctly, it will be 3.46 of course approximated plus j2 and it is also volts because this is a unit so for v2 it's actually the same operation six and then the cosine minus 40 degrees plus sine minus 40 degrees now if you count it out you get 4.16 minus J 3.86 volts. Okay, then we have the rectangle representation for V1 and V2. Okay, what we want is V total. So V total is the V1 plus V2. So what we can do is if you write it down next to each other like this what you can do is here very easily you count the real parts that's the real part is the real part for the real part for the v1 and the real part for the v2 and you count the imaginary part so imaginary part for v2 and v1 and imaginary part for v2 so what you get is I will do that in parentheses. So 3.46 plus 4.60. That's actually the addition of the imaginary of the real parts. For the imaginary parts, I get 2 minus 3.86. Now what you get? That's just we told. So what you get is it is 8.06. And minus 1.86 volts. That is just still in rectangular form. So V thought is still in rectangular form. What we want is, of course, in the time domain. So what we do first is go to the polar notation. So what we want is the magnitude and the phase. The magnitude of this vector is 8.06 squared plus minus 1.86 squared and that will be approximately 8.27 and if you go to the face and this is you can uh, sketch it out I will do that here you can see it is in the fourth quadrant so you don't need to use the special formula for the 
calculating the phase. So what you actually have is you have a vector which is like this. This is for the the real part, and this is for the imaginary part. I will do that in blue, which is all is all sketch. Of course, is not on not to scale. So if you calculate the the vector then it will be here and this this is the vector and this is the angle and it will be in the fourth quadrant okay that will mean the arc tangent of minus one 1.86 divided by 8.06 and that will be equal to almost minus 30 degrees now if you place this in the phasor notation v dot is equal to 8.26 phase minus 30 degrees volt now if you go from here to the Time domain notation v dot. I will do that in blue. That will be amplitude 8.27 cosine because that's the reference, and we have uh, 100 radians per second for the frequency. Both of them. It's mandatory. If this is different, then we cannot use this uh, analysis. So it will be cosine 100 t minus 30 degrees. And that is also involved. That's actually the final form. That's actually what the what the question was. Calculate the v dot using vasors, and we have done this. We just first represented each of them, each time domain representation given in the rectangular form, because we need to add. For addition, you do this. That's much more easier. And for addition, you take the real parts together and the imaginary parts together, and also convert this to polar form and from the polar form you go to the time domain that's actually the uh, situation for this part i hope it is clear for you we will keep this uh, going with another example uh, illustrating the concept so keep in touch and uh, subscribe to the channel and like it if you uh, fi find this very useful and share this so it comes to the more people thank you very much for your attention i will see you next time